How you doing, family? How you doing? How you doing? This is ACAB Devil, ACAB Devil, and this is AKA Father ACAB. How you guys doing? Welcome to the stream. Love you all. Glad to see you back. And I want to have my sermon. This is going to be the Sunday address. This is going to be the ACAB sermon. I'm going to do this every Sunday. I'm going to be having these bi-weekly, and I'm going to have this every Sunday. So this is going to be the ACAB sermon. This week in ACAB from your father, your pastor, Father ACAB. So today's sermon is entitled... The trail of bacon bits. Now, see, family, when people talk about police corruption, you bring up any individual one case. What will usually happen is that those people will say, oh, my goodness. Oh, that's just one case. That's just one case. And then you bring up another case. Oh, that's just another case. These are all isolated cases. Unless every single cop out there is bad. I don't believe that they are. They, they are. They are bad. And they need uh, any kind of reform that uh, you are. You are suffering under any kind of oppression that anyone in particular is suffering under any kind of oppression. That's what they'll do. But family, the reason why I call this sermon the trail of bacon bits. Here's why, family. Because when you follow the trail of bacon bits, family, what you find is. That a lot of people, a lot of people have been lying to you about the police. Really. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about, family. Check this out. It's something that you won't see live very, very often. So, family, this is from the ABC News, right? ABC News. Confidence in police practices dropped to a new low, according to the ABC News poll. They found that just 39% are confident that the police are trained to avoid excessive force. Just 39%. And this poll has been replicated across the country. You know, this is not just some one off. Right. So when people say things like, oh, I, I got a black friend who likes the cops, they call the cops all the time. Here's the Pew Research Center. Let's let's actually look at the facts. Is that true? You know, can the church say Amen. Is that true, family? We are finding that that's not true. Let's let's actually go look down. Do the do black people actually like the police? And the answer is overwhelming no. Right? Black adults say the criminal justice system needs to be completely completely rebuilt. That's what it says. Nearly nine in ten black adults say policing eighty seven percent, the courts and judicial says eighty six percent. In the prison system, 86% require major changes or need to be completely rebuilt for black people to be treated fairly. Only, only around 1 in 10 of black adults say that each system requires minor changes or no changes at all. Black adults differ by age, education, income, party, voter status, and their views about racism and on the kinds of changes they would like to see. Policing. Because people are going are gonna to deflect. Oh, we, you didn't look at the, the, the context. You only cherry pick. You, you cherry pick. Well, well let's, let's, let's go cherry pick the whole, the whole piece then. Fine. Cool. Policing. Nearly 9 in 10 black adults, 86, oh, 87% say policing needs large scale changes for black people to be treated fairly. 38% say it needs major changes. And the other, in, in, in about half, 40, 49% of black adults say that policing needs to be completely rebuilt. Only 11% say policing needs few or no changes for black people to be treated fairly. Only 11% out of all those people from the Pew Research Center. Let's keep going. The oldest black adults, 50%, are more likely than their younger peers to say policing needs major changes to treat black people fairly. However, black adults, 30 to 49, 50, 52%, and 50 to 64 48% are slightly more likely than those 65 and older, 42% to say policing needs to be completely rebuilt to ensure fair treatment. So, what we're seeing is that it's not just policing. It's also prisons. Majority of black registered voters say the prison system needs to be completely rebuilt for black people to be treated fairly. This is a Pew Research Center once again. You know, people want to get into the whole plebiscite babbling nonsense where you go back and forth and they and they try to confuse the issue and obfuscate the issue and try to get around the issue, engage in 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 gish galloping and trying to deflect and, and engage in all kind of bad faith arguments. Here's the direct argument. You can't misrepresent black people anymore. We see what we think about the police. And we see what we think about prisons. Let's continue. 
You want to go by state, fine. 19 Massachusetts, it's a, these are all recent cases. I want you, I want people always say, oh, it's, it's only a, a few, right? I chose some cases that I've covered recently, right? 19 Massachusetts police officers off the job as a result of a new law enforcement, enforcement certification, right? 19 cops, all kinds of crimes. I mean, you just name it. You just name the crimes. It, it's just the grossest, most disgusting stuff that you can name. 19 of them, all at once. And those are the initial waves. They are suggesting they're going to find many, many more. Many, many more. Greensboro Police Department, North Carolina. Crime analyst is third Greensboro Police Department employee to face SA types of crimes in one month. Throw away the whole department. That's the criminal analyst right there, uh, Matthew Sidney Hammonds. That guy right there. This, this wonderful individual. That's one guy. He's the only non-law enforcement officer involved in this. The other two are cops. Yeah. 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 And, um... I don't see a frozen screen, my friend. 255 yellow. Because I can log into my account and I can see it as well. So if you're going to troll, please troll somewhere else. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, speaking of that, you can be muted for the entire stream there we go so third guy in one month in that one department third guy yikes big yikes big yikes four boston police officers additional four boston police officers Charge with crimes. Overtime fraud scheme. 19 in total. That's from the Department of Justice right there. U.S. State, United States Attorney's Office, mm -hmm. District of Massachusetts. Yikes. Big yikes. Big yikes. Big, 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 big yikes, right? We don't, we don't want to promote things like that, right? Right, Blue Lives Matter? We don't want to promote things like that. Because things like that is not only shocking, it is unbecoming. Blue Lives Matter. Right? See, see, I, I want you to understand what I'm going to do, Blue Lives Matter. I'm going to go through the entirety of, of all the misconduct cases. I'm going to go through the entirety of all the cases in which I've covered recently. And I want you to justify all of them. Because I got to ask, why can one man find so much misconduct? One man? Really? One man. You don't think that's a little bit ridiculous? That one man can find so much misconduct, so much police misconduct to the point where it's, it's almost sickening. It's almost sickening the amount of police misconduct that I find in one day. Almost sickening. I, I want you to see this, right? See, many people. Let me share the stream real, real quick. I want to share the stream real quick to my Twitter page. There we go. So I shared it to my tw Twitter page. I want you to see this real quick. So I want you to see how criminal the average police officer is, right? How much they don't care about the law. Pittsburgh police resumed secondary traffic stops despite city ordinance against them. Right? So there's a law against them doing this. And yet they're still doing this. I'm going to say that for you again. 
Pittsburgh police are actively ignoring the law to resume secondary traffic stops, you know, low-level stops for no reason, really, you know, a busted tail light, improperly shown license uh, a, a, a tag, or, or something like that. Pittsburgh police are doing that right now. Pittsburgh police are doing that right now. Right now. They're, they are actively breaking the law. Do you understand what that means? How can you tell citizens to just obey the law when you refuse to, refuse to do so? How do you tell citizens to just obey the law if you're not going to do so? How do you come to me and tell me to just obey the law when you won't do it? You understand how, how absurd that is? It is absurd that police can come to you, like, like the police in Pittsburgh, come to you and demand, right, demand that you obey the law. And yet, when it comes time for them to obey the law, they won't do it. I want you to see this again. I want you to see this and, and just, I want you to see what Blue Lives Matter is defending, right? Pittsburgh police resume secondary traffic stops despite city ordinance against them. You, you're just flat out disobeying the law at this point because you want to. Secondary traffic stops, those are traffic stops that are for extremely low level stuff. You know, um, you know, air freshener in, you know, shown uh, um, in, you know, improperly. You know, city, silly, small level stuff like that, right? The city ordinance prohibits Pittsburgh police officers from pulling over a motorist if the primary reason is one of eight minor traffic violations. Officers could pull over a motorist for another reason and still issue a ticket for a secondary infraction. Advocate, advocates argue that racial bias can lead to disproportionate enforcement against black and Latino residents. Um, the ordinance was an attempt to mitigate those disparities modeled on similar legislation in Philadelphia. Right. It's, it's just it's just gross. The stuff that's happening. You have the police actively ignoring the law. Not even caring. You know, they tell us, well, just obey the law. Oh, you don't like the law. Just go change the law. We go change the law. Well, we're going to just ignore the law. Well, then which one is it? What do you want us to do, piggies? What do you want us to do? We went and we changed the law and you still won't follow the law. So at this point, you are nothing more than hired thugs with guns. We changed the law. Do you not see the headline? Pittsburgh police resume secondary traffic stops despite city ordinance against them. Meaning that the, that the citizens elected representatives who said, hey, we don't like this, our citizens don't like this, and they changed the law, they changed an ordinance, and the police are actively ignoring it, and yet you got people out here saying, well, just change the law, well, just change the law, well, we just changed the law, and you saw what happened, right? White supremacy, I'm white and I say so. You can change the law all you want to, but there's an ultimate law, a higher law, and that is white supremacy. We changed the law. What else do you want the people of Pittsburgh to do besides change the law and vote for the people to change the law? We'll fire the officers. Okay, fire the officers, but there needs to also be a law that when an officer refuses to actually do this, they are not only fired, they are barred from all law enforcement. And not only that, and not only that, if you pull somebody over and it was found, right, that you did it in violation of the law, you should be brought up on charges, put behind bars, thrown in jail, put in a pig pen where pigs belong. See, this is where, 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 it's, where it's many people who support police officers, this is where they lose me. There's no way to talk around this. You, we can't just say, well, be patient. There's no just be patient when the law has been passed and you won't follow it. 
Stop telling me to be freaking patient. Because for every little, little, stupid little thing, someone says, well, well, you can be patient. You can change the law. You can vote for, for the representatives. Uh, uh, you can, you can do this and, 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 and this hamster wheel and that hamster wheel and this plebiscite and that plebiscite. How about this? Instead of telling me what to do, how about you go to the cops? Give them grief. But you won't do that. Police officers have publicly accessible phone numbers that you can call at any point. You are a taxpaying citizen. If you pay federal tax dollars, you have every right to call them because every last one of them takes federal dollars. So don't you come to me whining and complaining about why I'm talking about, about police officers when police officers have publicly accessible numbers that you can go talk to the other side. Don't come to me. I'm so tired of people obfuscating the issue. The issue here is that the police are behaving like terrorist thugs. You pass laws and they don't follow them. Like a criminal would do. You pass laws and they ignore them. Like a mafioso would do. You pass laws and they ignore them. Like a Yakuza would do. You pass laws and they ignore them like a cartel member would do. You pass laws and they ignore them like El Chapo would have done. You pass laws and, you, and, they, and they ignore them like the Taliban would have done. You literally have deputy gangs. Hold on. Excuse me. Before somebody comes in here and defends police officers, I want you to see something. Lawsuit alleges new deputy gang forming in in LA County Sheriff's Department after the new sheriff was 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 elected a new deputy gang is popping up in LA right now you know what a deputy gang is you know all the all the bootlickers in the chat the bootlickers the ones that just can't keep the boat off the boot the ones there let me tell you what a deputy gang is it's a police gang a literal police gang in which you have law enforcement officers in sheriff's departments and, and police departments who have gang colors. They dress up um, in gang colors. They have tattoos. Um, they have rituals and ceremonies. They have, um, they have all kinds of violence that they engage in. Right? They have all that stuff going on. They behave just like a street gang. You have all kinds of names out there. But there's a new one popping up. And you have the former Los Angeles County Sheriff, whose name is Alex, Vill Alex Villanueva, who denied the existence of these deputy gangs. He denied the existence of it. He said it, it didn't even exist. And now the new sheriff, according to the L.A. Times, L.A. County Sheriff creates a new office to eradicate all deputy gangs. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. But, but Alex Villanueva said that the deputy gangs, right, the deputy gangs didn't exist. So how can you make an off? How can you make an office to get rid of deputy gangs when you said they didn't even exist? How is that possible? Well, wait a minute. Didn't Alex Villanueva say they didn't exist? He said that. He said that. He said that. And the new in, in the new office, right? The new office is gonna be ran by a person named Eileen Decker. And she was a former DA, so I actually like her. She's gonna be going after police gangs, deputy gangs. I I, I actually like her. I like what they're doing here. I, I I'm not a big fan fan of Robert Luna because I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of cops. But I like I like the action, right? You, you don't have to necessarily like the person, right? You can like the action. You can like the action. And the new office, right? Robert Luna says it could help 
protect taxpayers from such costly litigation, like the police misconduct litigation. It could protect it could protect the taxpayers from the deputy gangs who target people and especially black people living in Los Angeles. The number one target of deputy gangs, by the way. This could, this could actually help black people living in Los Angeles. It could help everybody, but especially the black people living there, which is I'm glad to hear if nothing else. That's a mutual benefit, if nothing else. You know, I, I would love it if one day I could ride through places like Los Angeles and I can I could at least count on the police not just 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 attacking me because my car is nice. You know. I got some money on me. And they want to engage in a civil forfeiture. I really, really hope they actually get this get this going. They actually get these deputy gangs out the paint. Because, you know, it, and it's not even the deputy gangs, right? So you got Pittsburgh police actively ignoring laws, right? New bill in Vermont legislator aims to hold police accountable, right? Right? New bill in Vermont legislator Aims the whole police accountable. So people in Vermont are sick of this nonsense. They're sick of this nonsense. They're sick of it. This is most likely going to pass. This is most likely going to pass. Because people are sick of this nonsense. It's happening in Vermont. Check this out. I want you guys to see this now. I cover this case. Governor Jim Justice reacts to West Virginia State Police misconduct allegations. So in West Virginia, state police had a major misconduct allegation where they had ghost accounts, right? They took taxpayer funds from the state of West Virginia and also federal funds, and they placed it into ghost accounts with uh, undisclosed debit cards and credit cards, and they were just swiping it. They were just swiping them for all kinds of personal uses, right? 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 Then you had them doing all kinds of things while they were on duty inside of state vehicles. I mean, the list just goes on. It, it was wild. It was it was Megan Hall, you know, the one out of Tennessee, you know, cop girl. It was that story plus a bank heist plus a stolen credit card with taxpayer funds all in one. It was a wild story. It is by far, it, it, it is looking like it could be the worst law enforcement corruption scandal in West Virginia history. That's why the governor had to respond. He didn't have a choice. It's, it's bad. It's bad. So so we've we've been through quite a state. We've actually been through quite a few states so far. Let's let's just keep going. So this is my home state of South Carolina. I want you to see why I started my journey, right? Ex-South Carolina sheriff is 13th convicted since 2010, right? This is Alex Underwood out of Chester County. Did I actually personally was a whistleblower with this guy? I was actually working corrections at the time when I was being told by family members and friends about this dude. And I tried to tell the attorney general and he ignored me. He ignored me every time I tried to, to actually blow the whistle. I was trying to be the good officer. I work corrections. I get that. It's not really, really my my lane per se. But when you hear certain things, you got to you got to say something, right? So I tried to do that. And now you see, it's hard to believe that someone like me can become a cab double or father a cab or or whatever you want to call me, right? It's hard to believe that I would go and become what I became out of the field that I came from until you see headlines like this, right? Because this is insane. You, the home state that I came from, 13 sheriffs have been convicted of crimes since 2010. That is an average of a sheriff a year. Meaning that these people are elected and we are electing these people. So even, even with the, the safety net of having to be elected, the cops there in South Carolina are all the same. I'm telling you. Otherwise, headlines like this are not possible. You got to concede it. You got to admit. Let's keep it a buck. Let's keep it a buck, man. Let's keep it a buck. 
When you read headlines like this, you can get why I do what I do. Because this is my home state. And I was involved in bringing down a lot of these sheriffs. Because ACAB, that's why. You want to know why I even went into law enforcement? I want you to see this. Sheriff of the Year for 2021, named Leon Lott in South Carolina. In Richard, he's a Richard County Sheriff in South Carolina. He's a 2021 Sheriff of the Year for the whole country. For the whole country. He's been covering up these types of crimes against kids mm -hmm. for years. And I'm one of them. I'm one of them. He did this to others. So I walk around with guilt, blaming myself. And I know in my mind it's not my fault. But it's hard not to feel that way. Right? So when you defend cops, this is what you're defending. I just want you to see that. I, I want you to look at that and bask in this police corruption pig oink 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 glory. Bask in it. Bask in it. 13 sheriffs since 2010 convicted of crimes and the trademark sheriff of the whole state does this kind of stuff. Let's move on. I, I want you to see more. Leaked documents from the Maryland State Police show that the state police use quota-like systems to reward arrests and issue new vehicles. So Maryland State Police, they're using a quota-like system, right? Whereas based on how many people you pull over, based on how many people that you ticket, if you're a Maryland State Police trooper or a Maryland State Police officer, they will give you a new vehicle based on the amount of times that you've done that. Mind you, those vehicles are paid with taxpayer dollars. Every time that somebody's pulled over and given a ticket or given a citation or charged any money because of a law enforcement officer, that is more taxpayer dollars taken from a taxpayer. And the new vehicles are going to be provided by taxpayer dollars in the first place. Even the paper that the tickets are printed off of are provided with taxpayer. Even the pins they, they are using to write you the ticket and they're going to use to, to rate their quota system was provided by taxpayers. And you want me to trust police officers. You want me. Mm. Ain't that something? You want me. After hearing all that. You trust police officers. Really. Really. After all that. Well, let's keep going. You remember SVU, Law and Order SVU, the trademark, uh, the trademark, the one thing that everybody watches when they when they want to feel like police officers are heroes, right? Well, did you know that the real life Law and Order SVU is under federal investigation right now? I'm gonna say that for you again. The real life Law and Order SVU is under federal investigation. Right. Because the victims that they pretend to protect, they don't actually protect. They cover up crimes. They harass victims. They go after victims. They silence victims. I want you to read the subtext here. A civil rights investigation will examine the police department's special victims division which has long faced troubling ac accusations from people who reported assaults welcome back kev ranks love you much brother all oh, love brother b1 hey you are you are the real you are a real one man thank you for giving me your support brother but the real life svu is under federal investigation because they they, they cover up things that happens to to victims they don't actually investigate the crimes like they show you on TV, like they lie about on TV. Hmm. Let's let's actually read some parts because I I know there's some people out there who support police officers who are listening. So I want to read this and, and and enunciate every word for my church of ACAB. The Department of Justice <clears throat> has opened a sweeping investigation 
of the New York City Police Department Special Victims Division in its handling of crimes, officials said on Thursday. Prosecutors in New York and Washington will examine allegations of officers failing to conduct basic investigative steps and instead shaming and abusing survivors and re-traumatizing them during investigations, according to a Justice Department news release. Oh, there's actually a link here. Let's open that link here. Oh no, is that official from the U.S. Department of Justice? Let's read from the U.S. Department of Justice, Blue Lives Matter. You say that cops are heroes. This is based on Law and Order SBU for all of you who may just be tuning in. Let's get deeper. Let your brother, brother ACAP here, let your brother cook. This is coming from the U.S. Department of Justice. Justice Department announces investigation of New York City Police Department's Special Victims Unit Division, or SVU, which is what Law and Order SVU is based off of. Comprehensive review of policies, procedures, and training, including SVDs, investigations of assault crimes, and treatment of survivors. The federal government is never going to look into a police department or a, a, a singular unit within a police department because usually when they step in, they're going to look at the whole department. Usually. If they're ever going to ever move, which is, which is, let's be honest, the government is very slow. They don't move usually at all. But if they do, they go in for the whole juggler. Okay? Let's keep it a buck. Let's keep it a buck. Let's keep it a buck fifty. In fact, let's keep it two bucks you, you could keep, you know, a quarter, okay? Keep it a buck 75. If the federal government actually steps in, they're going for the whole department. They're going for the whole department. So why would they target one specific department? Unless there was something they could find. Because when the federal government, when the FBI, when the DOJ, when they look into things, right? Let me let me give you a, a, a little bit of a heads up. Usually when they do that, right? They want to, it's, it, it works similar to the IRS. The IRS, they like to target a small business. They won't go after the multi-billionaire because they can fight you in court with money and powerful lawyers. So if, 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 the DOJ goes after a police department. They realize those, those police departments have unions. They have lawyers. They have law firms on their side. They have politicians on their side. So, so they're not going to target a whole department unless they got something hard. But usually when they got something concrete, they're going to limit their fire. They're going to centralize it because then the whole department doesn't feel like they have to defend the whole department. They could just say, OK, well, that's just one one little division. That's not the whole department. You can't blame all of us. And NYPD so far, that's been their position. Even the union, that's been their position. They've been radio silent about this. They haven't even talked about it. They, they won't even bring it up. They won't even bring it up. Notice how throughout all the parades they've had for officers who have fallen, they never bring this up because then nobody would care about it. Nobody would care about an officer, you know, um, you know, a fallen officer. Then nobody, nobody would care once they read that headline from the DOJ. It's it's kind of hard to right. It's it's listen. After you read a headline like that, it's difficult to care about a parade. For an officer, it's difficult to even advocate for one. It's difficult to even to even look at one and not want to vomit. Okay, that is some heavy stuff. You gotta admit, bro. You you gotta you got you gotta admit that's some heavy stuff. Now, that's heavy. That's heavy. Just look at that. That's heavy. Look at this. I, I want you to see this right. NYPD that expired law and order SBU under investigation for mistreating survivors. Mm. Let your brother a cab cook. Let your brother let let your brother a cab cook. Let your brother a cab cook. 
I got me some pork chops, neck bones, pig feet, pig ears. All, all, all of them are on the grill right now. If you if you listen closely, you'll even hear. It. Just just listen closely. I'm cooking them. And it was easy to 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 do this slow roasting, this 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 pig roast. Because the ingredients, as I've stated before, I started the sermon. This, the title of this sermon for this Sunday's Church of Acab sermon was a trail of bacon bits. A trail of bacon bits. And what you just saw, the reason why I say Acab was the trail of bacon bits that you just saw right there. I didn't even go through all the tabs. I had 38 tabs open. That 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 one headline that would embarrass an entire state's law enforcement that I could went I could have went through just now. But I elected not to. Because I think many of you prefer your meat to not be burnt. You want to let me cook, but you don't want to let me go crazy with it. So in conclusion for this this Sunday sermon. I want to say to you, family, the truth is out there and the bacon bits are out there. And if you just look, there's not only stories that disprove the individual stories of heroism from the hero police officer. <laughs> you can even find stories that embarrass an entire state's law enforcement. I showed you how I've given you the recipes. Now, cook family. That's going to be it, guys. I love you all. Chi Gemini, yo, bro. Um, riding pale horse, Kev Ranks, uh, everybody who joined me. Thank you so much. Until next time, horns up, peace out. Good night and good luck.